Hello and welcome to Speyside Wildlife Live. My name is James Stevens. I am a wildlife filmmaker and guide based right here in the Cairngorms National Park in the Scottish Highlands, a place famous for its whisky, its highland cattle, and of course, its rugged landscape and tremendous wildlife. And normally we'd be telling you all about that wildlife at the bird fair. Uh, we normally have a stand at the bird fair and we tell lots of people all about the holidays that we do in the UK and of course throughout the world. But sadly, um, the, the bird fair is a virtual event this year for obvious reasons. So we'll also be doing a virtual um, bird fair uh, with our company. And uh, we're kicking off the week um, with this Facebook Live. On Friday at 6pm, we'll be talking all about the Outer Hebrides. So Craig Round, one of our guides, will be talking all about the beautiful landscapes, coastal uh, landscapes, the wildlife in the tremendous Outer Hebrides, a truly beautiful place um, to be. And on Saturday at 6pm, Duncan MacDonald will be talking all about the Inner Hebrides, a place with equal beauty, rugged mountains, beautiful coastline with puffins, massive white-tailed eagles, and of course, tremendous scenery. So like our Facebook Lives before, we start off with a quiz, but this time we're up in the ante because we're actually going to be offering a prize. So again, at every bird fair, we offer a prize um, for the quiz um, that, we, that we host. And um, this time around, you have the opportunity of winning a guided day out um, in Speyside and in the surrounding areas. And all you have to do is identify the 10 birds in this bird. So our guide, Roy Atkins, has a very creative imagination and um, he's come up with this bird, which is made up of 10 different species. So if you know um, what those species are, write them all down and send, send an email to us at inquiries at spacewildlife.co.uk for your chance to win a guided day out. Now we'll um, announce the win on Sunday, so all of the people that have got 10, uh, the 10 species correct go, in, go into a prize draw and we will then randomly select um, somebody uh, to win that guided day out and of course that might be with myself um, or it might be with one of our other um, guides based locally. Now, like I said we have lots of different wildlife in, in Speyside but this time of year it's the flora um, that takes over and the heather at the moment is truly incredible. It's blossomed now and uh, there's just blankets of this, this lovely purple all throughout the Cairngorms and one of our guys Kate Many has been out on the moors and she's made a little film all about the, uh, the moorland wildlife. Scotland's landscape is so varied and important for our wildlife. From farmland, coast, woodland, mountains and moors. Areas of moorland cover around 50% of Scotland's land and here in the Cairngorms National Park it is easy to drive through these huge expanses of land. In August these miles of remote moorland come alive with the vibrant purple of the ling heather in bloom. Growing on peaty soil, this heather can withstand the harshest of Scottish weather. Showing its true beauty in late summer. Other plants that thrive on these damp lands include bog cotton, berry shrubs, willow and juniper. This habitat can be home to a variety of wildlife, including red grouse, endemic to the British Isles. They eat the shoots of the heather and the wild berries like cowberry using the heather to also shelter and breed. The males sport red eyebrows and their short beaks are perfect for plucking the heads of the heather for food. Raptors also hunt over these areas of moor, common buzzard, kestrel, peregrine, white-tailed eagle and golden eagle to name just a few.
In moorland areas with lochs, osprey can also be seen fishing here in the summer. Breeding waders can also be found here, including curlew, lapwing and golden plover. Meadow pipit, stone chat, wind chat, skylark and northern wheat ear. Higher montane areas are home to the mountain hare, turning white in the winter months and brown during the summer. Often hard to locate as they hunker down to avoid hunting raptors. Red deer roam on the high tops of the hills, often only the stag's antlers being seen on the horizon. A wild landscape at times, our moorland has plenty of wildlife to discover. Some really lovely scenes there and the heather, I said, like I said, at this time of year is really, really wonderful. I'm lucky at the moment I'm doing a, doing a commission and I'm in, I'm in some open woodland and the heather that carpets this woodland, woodland is absolutely stunning, really, really beautiful. Um, so yeah, go out and see the heather, it's lovely. Um, now a few weeks ago um, I was lucky enough to spend a day on Hander Island. It's a place where I try and go to every year if I can because it is truly special. Um, but I was worried that I wouldn't quite get there this year. But luckily um, I had the opportunity and I took a day out and I went to Hander Island and um, I made a little film about the characters that you can see on this place. Now it's owned and managed by the Scottish Wildlife Trust um, and they've created this boardwalk which goes all the way around um, uh, the island which is, uh, which is great because it means that you stick to the path and you don't go trampling on the, on the very precious habitat um, on the island. So here are some of the species that I saw on my day on the island. Yeah, like I said, I'm very lucky to be able to go this year. It is a truly amazing place to see all those different seabirds. Um, and one of the highlights, of course, are the puffins. Now, um, whilst I was there, a couple came up to me and said, oh, can you see the puffins? And I, and I pointed to where they were, and they looked through their binoculars, and they were amazed at how small they were. And um, I'm amazed at how many people have come up to me and said, oh, I didn't realise puffins were so small. Uh, a friend of mine in Indonesia thought they were, they were penguin-sized, um, which they're not. <laughs> so, um, so I've done a bit of a, a chart here so you can compare the sizes of puffins against penguins. So here is the emperor penguin, the largest and heaviest of all penguins found in the Antarctic. And here's the smallest penguin, a little penguin, found in uh, Australia and New Zealand. And here is our Atlantic puffin. You can see much smaller um, than puffins. Now it's almost the same size of a as a little puffin, uh, a little penguin, so um, you can be forgiven for that. Um, but they are indeed very small uh, birds and they're roughly the same size actually as a pint glass. Um, so that kind of gives you a sense of scale there that puffins are very small and they're not penguin sized at all. It would be really cool if they were, and uh, there are some species of puffins which are much bigger than the Atlantic, which is uh, the smallest. So um, yeah, you can be forgiven for thinking they're, um, that they, can, they should be bigger. 
Um, so yeah, now going from the coast uh, more closer, closer to home and um, one of our guides, Sally Noel, has been out um, walking her local patch and seeing the various characters um, that live near to where she is. He's been quite accommodating, watching me very carefully. I don't know how much he's going to tolerate. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to try and move him off the road. Because this is not a good place for a toad in the middle of the road. But there's a group of butterflies. And they're feeding on um, the salts from some pine martin poo at the edge of the road. These are Scotch Argus butterflies, a rather stunning combination of dark chocolate brown and, um, and deep orange. They're a butterfly we see quite a lot in the high Scottish Highlands um, and they're out in force at the moment. I know red admirals are not an uncommon butterfly but actually this is just Lovely just being able to video it quite close to and notice the detail. This one's been, it's been rather harassed by uh, bees. Very handsome male stone chat. Keeping close contact with his mate female stone chat, just out of sight at the moment. Beautiful little bird. So you can see the beautiful red male there. This is a mixture, we've got booted at the front, red male, youngsters, females generally have a sort of olive green rump, um, it's a very very lovely red male. really lovely wildlife there and I'm especially jealous of the crossbill at the end. It's a, it's a scene that I've wanted to film many times, crossbills drinking from a little puddle, um, but I'm yet to, uh, yet to see it. Um, crossbills can be really tricky, you tend to have to creak, creak your neck just to be able to see them at the tops of the trees. Um, so to get views like that of them all drinking at the, at the puddle there is, um, is really, really nice. So I'm just going to remind you of the quiz. Like I said, this is a quiz that you can actually win um, a guided day out in the Cairngorms. So there are 10 species in this um, rather interesting looking bird. So if you can identify all 10, um, submit them to, um, to our um, uh, inquiries at spaceofwildlife.co.uk, send us an email, um, and then you'll be in for a chance of winning uh, a guided day out. Now it, it's, quite, it's quite tricky, but give it a go. Give it a go nonetheless, because you never know, you might just get all 10, and then you might be on a, you might be on a day out um, in the near future. So moving away from the fauna now, we're going to go to the flora and with Roy, who created the, uh, that um, interesting looking bird. He is a bit of a botanical expert and he's been out on his river near to where he lives, looking at the various different flowers that you can find there. Hello from the banks of the River Tweed in Peebles, where I've been showing you flowers and birds and stuff right from early March when lockdown started. Back then it was wood anemones and primroses and the like. But uh, as we've gone through the seasons, the flowers have changed and I'm just going to show you today a few of the things that are in flower in August. This is Sneezewort, well in flower now, this is the time of year to see this species. It's um, closely related to yarrow, if you're familiar with that, that's a plant you might be familiar with from your own lawn even, you know, it's very common. And I've actually got a little bit of yarrow here as well and you can see they're kind of similar but Sneezeworth has much bigger, more daisy-like flowers with bigger petals. This is knapweed, um, a quite a late flowering plant related to thistles, as you can probably guess from the shape of the flower. And as you can see here, very popular with bees. This is a 
common card be enjoying the flowers of this napweed. Gorgeous, isn't it? One flower I remember showing you a bit earlier in the year was Meadow Cranesville. And uh, oh, this is another car to be coming feeding on these. That's nice, isn't it? So Meadow Cranesville starts flowering oh, possibly a month ago, but um, now it's much more covered in flowers. And it flowers a long time. And the name comes from, you can see there, you've got the flowers, but at the bottom I'm deliberately putting in some of the seed capsules as well because they have that long pointed thing which is rather similar to the shape of a crane's bill. Not, not too surprising, given we're beside the river, to find um, marsh woundwort growing here. Some of the flowers that I've been showing you earlier in the year have, are still going, of course, and I first showed you water forget-me-not um, probably weeks and weeks ago. So I've walked upstream a little way now. I uh, thought we'd finish with a view of Needpath Castle. Um, we're still right on the banks of the river. If I pan down, you can see there's the River Tweed flowing past. And there's a couple of other plants that grow on the banks here that I just thought I'd finish off with. The first of these is Devil's Bit Scabious. And I have to say, when I get to seeing Devil's Bit Scabious in flower, I tend to think the botanical season is getting towards the end. It starts flowering now, it will carry on into September. Um, not much else comes out after this, to be honest. So my final plant of this little walk is Scottish Bluebell, or as most of the, most of the books call it, Harebell. Rather a delightful flower, isn't it? And uh, from the banks of the River Tweed, I'll pass you back to James. Yeah, lots of um, lots of different flowers there on the River Tweed, and some yeah, some lovely different colours, shapes, sizes, and colourations. It's yeah, wonderful stuff. Now I have a garden, and. Um, I wanted to be a wildlife garden, so maybe that's a bit of an excuse to um, to be a bit lazy and to let things grow. Um, so I have left areas just to kind of be a bit more rugged. I've let the dandelions grow up um, because it's a great um, source of food for insects. And I've also planted quite a lot of wildflowers. And um, that has attracted loads and loads and loads of bees. And one of my favourite things to do now is just to watch them. Some might think this is a bit sad, but actually it's incredibly therapeutic just to be able to watch a busy bee going about its um, daily work. Um, it's incredible to watch them. Um, they get lots of different species, most of which are northern white-tailed. Um, they also get some common carder bees as well. And they are absolutely um, incredibly busy collecting pollen from all of these different flowers. I'm not too sure what this purple one is, but they absolutely love it. And it's not just watching them, it's the sound of the bees. So just take a listen at the sound of the bees here. Yeah, it's something that I could just watch all day. If I had if I had the time in the world, I would just be watching bees all day long because it's yeah, it's really wonderful to watch them, uh, watch them at work. Now bees and butterflies often take the limelight as some of the, some of the more favourable insects um, in the UK and in the world. Um, but for me, the best insect, not the best insect, but some of the, some of the more um, incredible looking insects are the moths. Now there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of species of moths in the UK. Uh, lots of different shapes, sizes, colours and patterns. So uh, myself and Kate, we've been doing quite a few uh, moth traps and uh, every morning we go and have a look and see what we can find and we've taken quite a few photographs so here are just a selection of some of the moths that we have seen um, collected in our moth traps.
some really wonderful species there. Like I said, they're so variable, such vibrant colours, such amazing patterns, and of course lots of different shapes and sizes. Because butterflies are relatively uniform in the way that they look. There's a few kind of odd ones out, like the comma, for example, has these funky different wing shapes. Um, but the moths really, really do kind of, um, yeah, create these different shapes and sizes and colours and patterns. And they're just, just absolutely wonderful. So um, I hope, hope you uh, can appreci moth pr appreciate moths a little bit more now. Now that is all the time we have, I'm afraid, um, but do come back at Friday at 6pm as Craig Brown will talk about the Outer Hebrides and all the wildlife that you can find there. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again at Friday at 6pm.